that did it okay they're black people so why would they do that to with all respect a lower tier battle rapper if you'll do that to a lower tier battle rapper than the higher battle rappers that people care about that we know have charges if they get caught and they do something that you wear like battle rap supposed to be in the streets i guess pretty much in, in quotation so if if you find out hypothetically somebody got caught with a burner or something and nobody knows about it and you find it out and you're bringing that to the culture what type of reporting is that like stuff like that's supposed to get checked because you're kind that's like police work to me like i i just don't get what's the the reason behind it like if you're a media outlet you have to bring some type of positive if you're going to do negative, you have to. It doesn't have, have to be. Way. I disagree with you. I hear your point, but I disagree with you. I don't think media outlets have to be positive, but, but, but. It got to be a balance, they, though. No, they have to be, they have to be factual. And so a lot of times, a lot of times, and this is why TMZ, the media outlet, is actually led by a lawyer, not a journalist, because it takes a whole understanding of what's in the public domain, what's the, what's the what's what you can disclose and the like, because it's a whole it's a whole area of law that, that that we're talking about. It's more than just free speech. It goes into defamation of character. It goes into slander and libel. These are whole areas of law where people have whole practices and they make millions of dollars a year per lawyer to defend people who do stuff like this. And some people won't be satisfied until such time as they get a, li a, li a liable suit or a slanderous suit. So even in these spaces, it's making comments in public. It's the public venue. And you come here and you make a comment you think you got a free right to make. If that comment is somebody gets offended by that because you're saying it in this space with 20 people, five people, two people, 100 people. Once it gets posted on YouTube, now it's got to a whole bunch of people. And now the word is out there and a little comment Comment you thought you was making to be cute when taken either in its context in its entirety or as a snippet look completely different now you done run into a, a lawsuit against somebody and i want to be real clear with you if that is doc petty you making that comment to about i promise you i'm gonna collect my money and if i feel that way and i'm not even a rapper or anybody else, other people feel that way as well. You can feel how you want to feel about me, but when you start to slander me, say things that I have that you know not to be true, whether you believe them to be true or not, you enter your you, you start getting yourself into a bunch of trouble. And Cardi B just had a lawsuit with a blogger in another venue about that very issue, opened her mouth about shit oh she God. didn't have no knowledge of, and a woman lost fooling with Cardi B because she felt like it was Cardi B so she could say anything about it. And I'm just, this would be a word of warning to a lot of people in here, just because you can get a position and have a have an opinion, don't mean you should always say it. I hope I'm helping somebody real, real big. Like, I ain't been through all the YouTube videos, but if I make my way through there and feel away, I promise you when you get that paperwork in the mail at your real address, like where you really stay, ask, pe ask people around here, can I find you? I'm, everybody is findable but give me five minutes your actual real name your actual mailing address and when you get that summons to appear in court I'm not playing no more and if I feel that way and I'm a nobody in the culture a somebody in the culture definitely feels that way do you see the point that I'm making everybody playing ain't playing with you that's, that's right. number one number two I learned about crabs in a bucket from my parents, not from no off the street. The street reinforced what I learned from my parents. My mom set us down and told us a story about crabs in a barrel. She said, crabs are all at the same level at the bottom of the barrel. Some are stacked on top of each other. Some are beneath each other. But to get themselves where they're trying to be, They'll see they 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 lash on to instead of crawling up themselves, they will latch on to the legs of some some of, of a crab that's ahead of them, uh, on, uh, above them, so they can get where they're going. And the result is that no crab actually makes its way out of the barrel because all the crabs that are beneath it keep trying to pull it down. When people move like this, is typical crab behavior. And it's done by people who feel like they're beneath the person that they're doing it to. 
Sometimes that could be me. Sometimes that could be you. Sometimes that could be them. But the truth is still the same. It is crab ass behavior. Full stop. D, the boss. Uh, what's going on to the beautiful people out here in the world? Uh, I come provide light and energy. Hope everybody's doing good. Uh, I'm excited. Can y'all hear him? I'm excited. Yeah. Uh, uh, yeah, my, yeah, my, 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 my yeah, my vibe is different. I got I got excitement. I got great stuff happening Monday, Doc, that I told you about. So I'm in a great mood. And I hope somebody told you that they cared about y'all today. I hope y'all ate good. I hope y'all had y'all some water, some fruit. And y'all been around positive people today. Hope you smiled. You said water? Okay. Yeah. And I hope y'all been around some positive people. You know what I'm saying? I hope you've been around nine um, influential people. So that way you could be influential to somebody else. You hear what I'm saying? Uh, some of y'all have been having a little bit too much dip on your chip and it ain't the flavor you like. But it's okay. It's okay. Save some of that dip because somebody else might need it. You hear what I'm saying? So I hope this message is going through to somebody. It might not be for everybody, but I know it's for somebody. To the family, I love you. I hope y'all going to have a wonderful night. And uh, peace and blessings. Got a battle tomorrow. Hope y'all able to show up tomorrow. We going to be there, bro. These are facts. Yeah, so you know what I'm saying? So it's gonna be everything's gonna work it work its way out, man. Negative energy, it comes and it goes, man. You don't shed no light to it because that's how it grows. You know what I'm saying? When you put it in the darkness, you don't get you don't feed it, it dies away. So positive vibes to everybody. Love to all who needs love. Uh that, that's all I got for you. Peace and love, peace and love. Peace and prosperity to you, bro, the boss. Um, so this is weird, right? Because I feel like we need a better understanding of what it means to support somebody. So when I say that, it's even in her and Henny and her, how passionate she was about supporting her brother. One thing she never said was whoever the accusers are, are lying. So that's one thing that she never fixed her mouth to say. You know what I'm saying? Um, at the same time, like anybody of that, like we can, you can support somebody that's close to you that's being accused without condemning the accusers. And you can support those that feel that they have been assaulted without condemning the accused. Like those two things aren't aren't mutual, aren't absolute. Like they don't come as a package deal, especially in the absence of all of the evidence and the normal ways that we go about things. You know what I'm saying? Like that's I, I think the premise of guilty innocent until proven guilty is important because it could be your brother, your daddy your son, your whoever, and you want them to get that benefit of the doubt. You don't want your son's job to fire him. You don't want somebody to just see your son in a mall and know that he was accused of something like that. And he ain't even been, uh, been to the first day of his hearing, but some dudes jump him just on the strength that he been accused of some foul like that. And they don't play about them type of crimes. Cause there's men out here that's like that. Are oh, you been accused of that? Nope. Just the accusation. And now they want to put hands on, but ain't nothing been established yet so it's just important we can support victims we can support survivors without condemning whomever they are accusing until that person is convicted now once they convicted that's a different ball game but while we still in the process of it like we have to be able to wait until evidence is available and wait till more things come to light without being accused of being a woman hater without being uh, uh, accused of um, supporting a rapist because nobody's been convicted of rape. Like, I think that that's important. You know what I'm saying? If it's not, and it, it's going to be people that feel like it's not, trust me, I've been through it, but I'm, I'm unmovable on it because I know people on both sides. I know people who have committed sexual assault and the ones that I know they were, they supposed to be for the most part, either in jail or dead. But I also know some that have been falsely convicted so it works on both sides and until it's you, maybe you won't get it. But for Henny to be receiving hate DMs and hate texts and hate emails and all of this about her being anti-woman or defending a rapist or whatever the case may be, all she's saying is he's innocent until proven guilty. And she's not going to let nobody condemn her brother until he has had a fair trial. 
I don't see nothing wrong with that. I didn't hear her say anything negative about any of the victims or victim, whatever the case may be. I didn't hear her address them in any capacity. She just saying the case open. Let's wait till it's closed before every, anybody jump out of a window on either side, on the innocent side or the guilty side. Let's let let's let stuff happen. What I think, I yes, and I first of all, I want to make certain I a complete. I agree with you, and I acknowledge that, and I think that's important. I want to make another point about this as well. It goes to the point that Remy was making, and I'm definitely uh, going to paraphrase this, and I hope I do a good job because he's not here to actually respeak for himself. But he was making a point about us, about black men, and our uh, inability in these Americas. And in its courts and in the court of public opinion, often to receive um, the totality of what is a what ought to be available to us as it relates to jurisprudence and particularly as it relates to innocent until proven guilty. Right. And that includes the right to good lawyers. It's a number of black men in this country who actually go to jail because you got a, a trash ass lawyer. Your lawyer's bad. Your lawyer's bad. And, and there was no way it just, it just it, we, we know other people have lawyers that can make them innocents look real. They, their guilt look real innocent. And we got, and there are also a lot of lawyers who just aren't, who ought not be practicing law? They 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 ought not actually step foot in a court at all. A court a court you're by Marriott, a basketball court, no court. And oftentimes, black men get those lawyers that we don't really get unless we can afford them lawyers who are have the highest level of competence. Sometimes we're very blessed, right? You have these innocence projects and other types of projects that really make a point to make certain that's more parity with respect to law and that we're getting better lawyers and that uh, cases that have been closed, to your point, DeVos, are actually getting the right consideration. But in the aggregate, overall, we don't, it's, it's not, the, the law is not equal. Um, and it 